Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Managing Project Time, Cost, and Procurements. This is Lecture A. The objectives for managing project time, cost, and procurements are to define project management time activities, define project cost management activities, define project procurement activities. Project management is organized as processes and knowledge areas. There are nine project management knowledge areas, integration, scope, time, cost, human resources, quality, communication, risk, procurement. This unit addresses how the project team manages the project time, cost, and procurement processes. We will review the process groups relevant to managing the project time, cost, and procurement. These are initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. We will assume that the project scope is well defined after the work breakdown structure, WBS, is created. The project team then decomposes or breaks down each work package of the work breakdown structure to create an activity list. The activities in each activity list are sequenced followed by estimating activity resources, estimating activity durations, and finally developing a project schedule. The project schedule becomes an important factor for creating cost estimates for all project activities. This slide is intended to show where time, cost, and procurement management take place in our process group sequence. Project planning can begin at the completion of two key project initiation processes. These processes involve creating the project charter and having it approved by the project sponsor, identifying the project stakeholders. Once these steps are completed, the project can move forward into these phases. Initiating processes are performed to define a new project or new phase of an existing project. A project charter is created, stakeholders are identified, and the project is started. Planning processes are performed to define the scope and objectives of the project and develop plans to accomplish the objectives. During project planning, the project management plan and project documents are developed that are used to perform the project. Executing processes are performed to accomplish the work of the project and satisfy the project objectives. Monitoring and controlling processes involve tracking, reviewing, and controlling the progress and performance of the project, identify required changes to the project management plan, and take preventative or corrective steps appropriate for the changes. Closing processes are performed to finalize all activities and formally close the project or phase. Mindfulness of time, cost, and procurement management is important throughout the various processes, including during project planning project execution, and project closure, as well as during project monitoring and control, which spans across all other processes. Before we begin to manage time, cost, and procurement, we will assume that the project scope is well defined after the project WBS has been created. The project team decomposes, breaks down, each work package of the work breakdown structure to create an activity list. The activities in each activity list are sequenced, followed by estimating activity resources, estimating activity durations, and finally developing a project schedule. The project schedule becomes a key input to creating cost estimates for all of the project activities. A project budget is developed by adding all of the activity cost estimates together. The project team will decide if they will perform the work or if it will be outsourced. This is considered a buy versus build decision. A procurement plan is used by the project team to manage obtaining goods and services required to complete project activities. This slide provides an overview of the sequence of the activities followed by the project team during project planning. The following five essential processes are required to develop a schedule determine the budget, and make procurement decisions. We must complete the collections requirement process, complete the scope definition process, create a WBS, begin to decompose or define activities within that WBS, and then, finally, develop a schedule, determine a budget, and begin to make procurement decisions. 
A variety of activities will take place when developing time, cost, and procurement management plans. This table illustrates how these activities break down across the different process groups. When developing a time management plan, it is important to at first define all of the project activities. Once that's done, begin to sequence these activities. Once they are sequenced, you will begin to estimate the activity resources required. Estimate the duration of each activity. Develop a schedule and then control the schedule. In the cost management process group, you will begin to estimate costs, determine budget, and control costs. The activities in procurement management will involve planning procurements, conducting procurements, administering procurements, and closing procurements. To ensure project success, it is very important that the project scope be clearly defined before starting project execution. Project requirements are generated from the information contained in two project initiating documents, the Project Charter and Stakeholder Register. The Project Charter is issued by the Project Sponsor, which formally authorizes the existence and start of the project, describes the business need or justification of the project, and provides product and project requirements. The Stakeholder Register contains the requirements or needs of the stakeholders. The requirements could be for quality items, organizational processes, or directly related to the product of the project, such as performance capabilities. Requirements can be gathered by techniques such as stakeholder interviews, focus groups, questionnaires, surveys, and facilitated workshops. The requirements documentation is analyzed by the project team to develop a project scope statement. This document provides a narrative description of the project scope. A major source of problems in IT projects is poorly defined scope, that is, scope boundaries, what's in, what is in or out of scope. The project scope cannot be added or deleted by the project team without proper authorization. The scope statement is used to create a WBS. A WBS is essential for project success because it ensures all work is identified, project management work, product, and product scope. A key input of many of the project management processes is the scope baseline. It is comprised of the WBS, WBS dictionary, and project scope statement. The WBS is created by the project team on every project, regardless of the project size or complexity. It is a hierarchical, deliverable-oriented graphic image of the project scope. It provides the complete scope of the project in greater detail than the scope statement. The lowest level of the WBS is called a work package. Each work package contains a list of activities that can be estimated and completed. In this unit, we will focus on work package cost, schedule, and procurement. The activity lists, scope baseline, contain clearly identified activities or work that must be performed to accomplish the scope, deliverables, of the project. The scope baseline is used by the project team as direct input to determine the following, activity definition, sequence activities, estimate activity durations, estimate activity resources, develop schedule, estimate costs, determine budget, plan quality, plan procurements. This information is vital for the project team to create a realistic schedule and budget. The project team uses the activity lists generated from each work package to create the project schedule, determine the project budget, and make procurement or outsourcing decisions for the project. Project constraints must be identified and managed by the project team because of their impact on the performance of the project. Projects have constraints related to scope, time, cost, and other items such as technical and legal issues. Early in the project, it is important for the team to work with the key stakeholders and ask questions about constraints so they can plan the project schedule, budget, and procurement activities. Take a moment to list project constraints inherent in your organization. 
Once you have completed that question, list unique constraints you have encountered on individual projects. Shown on this slide is Henry Gant, 1861 to 1919, the father of planning and control techniques. The project manager must identify and manage project constraints. Project constraints are identified and assessed by examining project scope, time, and cost requirements. For example, time, event, urgency, deadline, must be completed by scope, purpose, performance level, requirements, features, cost, cash, labor, supplies, equipment, quality, outsourced work, transportation. Managing project constraints can be viewed as a juggling act because if one of the constraints on the project changes, the project manager must evaluate if there is an impact on the other constraints. The triple constraint is the basic foundation of project management. As the slide illustrates, the triple constraint demonstrates competing demands on projects. These are typically scope, time, and cost. All constraints are considered equal unless otherwise dictated by the sponsor. If one factor changes, another factor will likely be impacted. Project quality requires balancing the triple constraints. If the schedule changes, the project manager must determine if there is an impact to the project cost or scope. If the budget changes, the project manager must determine if there is an impact to the project schedule or scope. If the scope changes, the project manager must determine if there is an impact to the project budget or schedule. Prior to developing a schedule, determining the budget, or making procurement decisions, the project team must examine project constraints. The project manager should assess the impact of constraints prior to developing project management plans. Questions to ask include, are all three aspects of the triple constraint of equal importance, time, scope, cost? Can the constraints be prioritized, rank order? What is the flexibility of a constraint? Is it time critical? Is the deadline absolute? Is the budget absolute? Can the deadline or budget be negotiated? What is the customer's risk tolerance? Answers to these questions will help the project team develop a schedule management plan, cost management plan, and procurement management plan. During project planning, the project team decomposes the work packages to produce an activity list composed of multiple activities. The activities are sequenced, activity resources and durations are estimated, and a project schedule is developed. A goal of the project team is to develop a realistic schedule. All of the project work that must be accomplished will be included in the schedule. The team will develop a schedule management plan to define how the schedule will be created, what scheduling tools will be used, a sequence of how the work will be performed, and how the schedule will be managed. The sequence to developing a schedule starts with defining activities, which are then sequenced. Estimates are determined for the resources required to perform the work, estimates are determined for the duration required to complete the work, and finally the schedule is produced that will be followed in project execution. The schedule is monitored and controlled during project execution. The major or key outputs for each of the six project time processes are indicated on this table. First, the planning process group will define activities. The key outputs are an activity list and a milestone list. Second, the planning process group will determine the sequence of activities. The key outputs of the sequencing will be a project schedule network diagram. Third, the planning process group will estimate activity resources. The key outputs of this activity are activity resource requirements and a resource breakdown structure. Fourth, the planning process group will perform estimations of activity durations. The key outputs are activity duration estimates. Fifth, the planning process group will develop the schedule. The key outputs of this activity are a project schedule and a schedule baseline. Finally, a team should commence the process of monitoring and controlling. This involves the activity of controlling the schedule. The key outputs will be work performance measurements and change requests if the requirements of the project change. The project schedule can be developed after the following activities occur. 
All activities are sequenced. Predecessors and successors are determined. Activity paths are determined. The duration of each path is calculated and the critical path is identified. It is the longest path and determines the earliest the project will complete. This concludes Lecture A of Managing Project Time, Cost, and Procurements. In summary, you have learned about the WBS and how to use it to show the entire structure of a project from beginning to end, including how to use it to examine the discrete activities. This information informs project time and cost management activities and impacts developing a project schedule as well as estimating costs, determining a budget, and controlling the budget.